Hello everybody, welcome back to another Scrap Can video. Um, you know me, I've been pretty into live streaming and making shorts recently, but this time I'm going to make a Scrap Can video. Um, and let's get straight into it. So, um, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick a location near a lake or any water source. Typically, you want to have it like a raised surface like that thing over here so that the bots spawn outside of the raised area so that when they're aggro on you and they're trying to get to you and kill you or destroy your crops, they would spawn outside of here and they would be coming towards you or your farm, but they can't get up the hill. So typically you want to put your farm on that kind of surface, normally the edge of it, so that you don't have to use as many saw blades and engines. And that's it for tip number one. On to tip number two. Okay, on to tip number two, which is the saw blade farm defense. As you can see on the video on screen, uh, I made that video about a year ago. Uh, not as good quality as my latest videos, but... It does tell you how to make a saw blade farm defense, as you can tell. And first, you want to make a um, big line of blocks, just just uh, just one block, one row. And if it's down a slope, you just lower it a little like that, just so that the bots can't get through. Um, there's a gap like this. You want to turn the saw blades on for any gap, and see if the bots get to it without getting hit by the saw blades and if they can't you're gonna need to extend it out like this one so that uh, the bots cannot get in no matter what hopefully and the only way they could get in is if your engines are too fast they get spun super quickly into the farm past the saw blades and then you gotta you gotta kill them with your hammer before they get to the crops so yeah you attach these seven or eight blocks between each other these saw blades onto bearings you connect the row of blocks to this control panel over here, and uh, you would hook up all of these to all the saw blades you can, and hook up one switch to all the engines, so that once you turn it on, it's spinning all the saw blades. You're gonna want to use level 2 engines, probably. So then, let's test it with some bots here. See if they can get through or not. We can shoot them a little bit while they're out there. Oh, see? See, that's what happened. Oh, what the heck? Oh, it's right there. Oh, but yeah. Oh, see? There's a gap right there. So the tote bot was destroying my saw blade somehow. So yeah, if you have a stud gun, yeah, you're gonna... Whoa! That thing just got launched. Yeah! Okay. As you can see there, he just got launched a mile away because of how fast these saw blades are spinning. So you're gonna want to use the level 2 engines. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So, saw blade farm defense, kinda easy to make as long as you have the materials to make all the saw blades, which is a lot. But yeah, it's pretty useful as long as you have all the materials. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for tip number uh, two. And see so you at tip number three. Alright, here we are at tip number three with the automatic water dispenser. As you can see, fully functioning. It goes back and forth. As you can see, waters a 5x5 five five area of soil plots with the, uh, the border. So, um, you can watch the video on screen right now that I made about a year ago. Not going to be as high quality as my latest videos, but still does the job. Uh, big thing that I did not mention in that, in that video. Um, you must, and you must by all means hook up the logic gate with the switch because if you don't on the way back here where it goes back like that it's going to spit out the water from the cannon again so you're gonna pay for two times the water instead of just the normal amount that you need so that's gonna be a, a bad thing. So then, um, you're gonna need to do that, hook it up, and yeah. So, just go watch the video, you can build it for yourself, you can maybe even 
make two right next to each other if you want, so you can make more farm plots if you want to farm a little bit more. That's what I did in my survival world. And yeah, on to tip number four. Tip number four, here we are. Infinite water supply. You heard me right. Infinite water supply. Yeah, it's downright infinite water supply. Um, nothing needed except the materials to build it and nothing else from there. Literally nothing else from there. So all you need is a few pipes, curved pipes, and a vacuum pump, a water container, a switch, some blocks to connect it to your little control panel over here. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and, uh, don't forget to invert the direction so that it's not going down and spitting out the water. It's sucking in the water with the green arrow that's facing up. Um, yeah. And then the other thing, you want to connect the pipes to this little green circled thing right there. And, yeah, that's literally infinite water. Um, this is how it works. You want to connect the switch to that, to the pump. Um, the pipes take it in through here. Then you're going to connect the, um, the water container to your water cannon. Uh, also, make sure that this is connected to your panel as well so you can attach the switch to that. And uh, that, uh, this switch to that. And, uh, on to tip number five. On to tip number five, color coding. Um, you want to color code your switches to correlate with what they are for. For example, red for gas to hook up to these, uh, to the motors for the saw blade defense. And the, uh, cyan color for water. The automatic water dispenser. But yeah, automatic water dispenser for your 5x5 five five area, as we said earlier, connected with everything. That's it for tip number 5. Alright. Alright, on to tip number 6. The next thing you want to do is what engine to use. You definitely want to use engine 1 or 2, multiple of these hooked up to all your saw blades, and the switch, the color-coded red switch, um, hooked up to all the engines so that the speed isn't so high that the bots just get flung in through the saw blade defense into your farm and uh, clearly you would never want that right so then you would go you would switch to an engine one or two on to tip number seven all right tip number seven here um literally all you have to do is find a a small little lake that looks like water but it is entirely black, which is an oil, uh, an oil lake, no, an oil, some, some sort of, uh, like, mini pond with oil in it, um, it's just all oil, uh, so that you can do this exact thing into a, a, uh, let's see here, a, um, where is it? gas container and then you can uh do some trips with your car back and forth grabbing that gas and putting it in all of these engines evenly distributed and then you can also put a gas like one of those gas tank things right up here so that you have a storage of gas um on to tip number eight moving on to tip number eight here how to find packing stations very easily. All you have to do is find a road, any road at all. Doesn't matter where you are. Um, there can be packing, there are always packing stations along the road. So if you just follow the road, you will eventually always find a packing station. And then you can place a beacon there. So, you can place one right here. We can label it with the, uh... What should we label it with? We can label it with... Let's just label it with that. Um, let's do green. Uh, just for the, uh... You know. So then you can constantly see that marker right there. And, yeah. Um, that is it for tip 
number eight. Um, see it, tip number nine. Okay, on to tip number nine, tips to fight bots. If you have a hammer, or you run out of potatoes or spuds for your spud cannon, you would use your hammer, right? Definitely not if you were fighting a farm or tape bot, though. That's, that, that's, that's for sure. You would just run away at that point. So, gonna break open this one. So here's a toad bot here. What the heck? Okay, here's a toad bot here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move to the side and just keep swinging like that. Do it again. Just an example. What you're gonna do come on, is you're going to move, keep moving to the right or left. And just keep swinging so that you keep hitting them. For t uh, for a hay bot, come on. You would uh, keep moving backwards. Just keep moving backwards. Come on. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, just keep moving backwards, jumping maybe. Um, he might hit you, but it's most likely that he won't. Uh, just get an aggro, please. Thank you. Should get him pretty mad, please. Thank you. You just keep moving back. Keep running back, keep running back and jumping. Um, he shouldn't, now that, there, he got pretty close to me, so he was able to hit me. Um, just, yeah, just keep jumping. Uh, that did not, maybe because I hit him twice with the, uh, the spud can. Um, but yeah. Gonna shoot that at him. You just want to try and get him as, ag as aggro as you can get him. Uh, like so, come on, come on. Come here, thank you. Okay, now he's gonna be aggro on me. Just keep moving back and jumping, and you shouldn't be able to hit you. He might hit you a few times. Maybe once or twice. Um, but yeah, that's everything you need to know about tips to fight haybots or towbots with your hammer. Hey everyone, last but not least, tip number 10. How to farm without tape bots or any higher level bots raiding your farm. So you can pause the video here and study these three charts showing the crop value, raid levels, and the type or amount of bots you get every wave for each raid. And in order to not get tape bots, all of your crop values added together must be under 60, and then you're not going to get a tape bot. And that's how to farm without any tape bots. Like always, like and hit that subscribe button. All right, you better for your Christmas presents early. All right, do me a good favor here. But yeah, I need that. I need that mortgage. I need that rent. All right. Um, but yeah, like and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Uh, bye bye, mate.